everyone this is Kelly and I'm here to take a look at the faceted garden oracle um, and I'm really excited this was I don't know if this was a pre-order I to be honest I don't remember I don't remember if this was a Kickstarter or a pre-order or, or what it was but um, I backed it as soon as the pre-order or whatever came out because I love uh, the creator's illuminated earth oracle. So I'm just going to talk about this for one minute or whatever, you know me, whatever length of time. Um, and then I'll come to this because um, I think it's, you know, just kind of touching bases. I've had this for a while now and it has been one of my most used oracle decks. Now, take into account that I do um, a lot of sort of earthy, animistic, shamanistic style decks a lot, especially in my private practice, but also in, uh, you know, my ancestor reading is one of my most popular readings, especially in this last year, and I use this in that reading. Um, I will also use this in my web reading, which is a very earthy associated with the Weaver's Oracle, very um, earthy feeling um, type of a reading. So in, it's used in both of those two readings, and I do those readings a lot. So it has definitely gotten a lot of use, but I've also used it with like this deck works beautifully with um, say the moon uh, my, moon child tarot blah, blah. the moon child tarot is one that I use a lot for um, my grief readings or my port in the storm I will use the moon child and then use um, this it, it visually and just it works really beautifully with the moon child you sort of have that as above but even the moon child for me is far more earthy than say the star child which is not a deck I use so I've just gotten a lot of use out of this. It is, I would have to say, other than my Shaman's Oracle, which is, again, something that is, is the key um, cornerstone to my ancestor reading, um, those two decks are probably my most used Oracle decks in the last year. Now, of course, I use a lot of other Oracle decks here and there, um, and I would certainly say uh, the Oracle decks that I use... Um, like the art for oh, art history for past lives deck but um that one I use a lot because I use that in my past life readings so there's other decks that I use but I would say if I had to pick one deck um over the last however long I've had the illuminated earth that I use the most it would be this one so I have used this deck a lot and um so I feel like okay I've got a lot of experience with the creator um it's just it's a beautiful um b it uh, for me and I'll be interested in how this plays out in this the faceted garden because what I love about this so much is that it really does for me tap into that earth space that natural world of the cosmos of the earth it's natural energy right it's not bad or good it just exists and how are we going to you know what of that energy is at play and how are we going to work within it or around it or or with it because it's there and it's it's just part of the things part of what's going to be there and we just have to do the work with to exist with it it's not positive or negative it just exists Another one that's similar to that would be like the Devas of Creation um, that has that same similar vibe um, to it uh, in terms of that. We're just looking at energy as it is and now what are you going to do with that? How are you going to work with that? Because it is there. Um, and so this is definitely, I mean it looks, I, I edge this myself. It's definitely getting worn because I riffle shuffle and I have riffle shuffled the heck out of this um, deck and it's you know beautiful it's still nice and straight um it's just it's just a gorgeous deck it's really is uh, a cornerstone of what i would consider my core decks um, and so of course when this came out i was like yes now originally it was in my head that oh my goodness i can just add this to this pile and i'm gonna have this giant amazing deck 
Um, that's not going to be the case. This is a different cardstock and it's slightly smaller. We'll, we'll get into that in a second. Um, but I think that that is probably good. Number one, it would end up being what over a hundred cards, which is going to be a lot to handle and B, this is different, right? This is the illuminated earth and this is talking about the garden and there is a different concept, uh, and a different archetype surrounding a garden than the whole earth. And so I think, sorry, that's my bread. Alexa, stop. <laughs> My, I feel like now that I've started to make my own bre bread, that the bread alarm um, reminding me about um, the bread in some capacity, either the bread machine beeping off, or this is a 30 minute timer of letting it cool before I slice it and get that first slice of delicious warm bread with honey slathered all over it. Um, it's, it's, it's interrupting everything. So anyways, we're gonna just keep going. Um, but yeah, I think that in the end that's going to work to my benefit because I think this has got a different archetype to it um, than this does. And I, I think that that will be good to keep separate anyways. So, okay, that introduction is just to say, hey, it's a touch-in. If, if you have this one or if you've been interested in with this one, I have used this extensively and it's just so powerful and I absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, now, uh, so this newest one is the uh, Faceted Earth. Um, and so it is in a similar box. Um, it's slightly wider. From what I understand, the size of the cards wasn't quite, you know, it's a little bit smaller than the creator expected them to be. They were cut smaller. And you can feel it. Like this is a really snug into the box where this definitely has more wiggle room as if uh, the cards should have been just a little bit bigger than um, they ended up being. So you can definitely feel that play within the box that is not uh, here. So the box itself is slightly larger, slightly wider than this, but the exact same height as the Illuminated Earth. It is just as beautiful. This is, I think, a beautiful box. Um, and I think this is just as beautiful. It has more of an iridescent um, on the text, whereas this is a gold. I have to say the gold is a little bit easier to read, um, but it's it's beautiful. They're they're both beautiful boxes. There's no letdown whatsoever in the box. This was a 63 card deck, whereas this is a uh, 50 card deck. So this is 13 cards less um, than this, but still you can imagine that would have been quite a chunky deck. Um, to to deal with if I had been able to blend them together as I expect was hoping to originally. So again, it's a tech box. It has the thumb things that I really appreciate and want in a box to get them out of um, because very often, and this is why these are important, is very often I will take them out of the box and put the box together and put them here. If you don't have that thumb thing, it is so hard to get bo empty boxes apart. You're sitting there like shaking them and shaking them. It's very annoying. So then I end up having to make sure I go like this when I put it away, which takes up a bigger real estate if I've got three or four decks like that. So it's not just, you know, oh, you're being picky to say you want the thumb things. There is a reason. Um, it's beautiful. Again, it's got sort of a two-tone color there. Um, very similar to this although this is a bright green um, so it's a nice box very sturdy this has held up well this has um, been in a bag I've been taking this out of town with me it's held up really well protected everything as it needs to but most of the time this has been on the shelf my deck sits out all the time I have a sort of core set of decks that are always out on my nature's um, kind of nature uh, earthy altar and this is always out there um, but when I travel I have put it in here and it's held up really well so um, the key the book I don't even have here's my key book because that stays in my uh, little white book because I love this um, 
I will say about this, I think I may have, I can't remember if I was a little disappointed of just having these little paragraphs in this original. I will say that this is, she does a really good job. It is just enough, A, pretty much, you know, you can just go with what's there and your own reaction to it. But if you are at all like, okay, I want to hone in on it, it's just about, a, you know, a paragraph. And it's a, some of them are small paragraphs, but she really hones you in to what you need to at least understand where that card is coming from, and then you can run with it. Um, and so I don't personally think that it needs anything more than that. Um, and so my assumption is going to be that that's going to be the same case with this um, because I've had really good experience with this, yes, being small, but it's it's perfectly enough to zoom, hone you in on what it is, what her intentions were for it to mean, and then you, of course, running with it however you would like to run with it. So this isn't in a staple booklet form, which is different. It's kind of in this papery form. Uh, obviously, there's less cards than there were in the other one. Um, so we'll take a look at that in a second. Oh, I should keep this out. Um, backing wise, oh, and size, okay. So it's hard to see it. I don't necessarily think that you're going to even be able to see it. Um, it's just cut slight. So it's not like it's just very much. We're talking about, you know, a very, very small amount, but it's almost as if, you know, if you just center this on the car, the new one on the old one, it's like it's just thinner, uh, just a, a bit smaller all around. Um, however, that is going to make a difference when you go to, if you put all these together and try to shuffle them, um, I think what you'll find is that it will probably break at different points or always on the same thing. Like it's always going to split, at least the way I split, on the same kind of either on this one or this one. I think it's just enough that you're not going to be able to blend it. Maybe I'll try a one, but I did kind of already faux try. Um, and these do have edgings in that iridescent, which is gorgeous. Um, yeah, I almost, you know, for a garden, I almost would have rather it been something dark, like a green or a gold, like a uh, antiqued gold, um, like I kind of did here with with marker, just because we're talking earthiness, garden, soil. It's such a rich. I mean, look at that new moon. It's such a richly saturated deck that this almost feels a bit bright for me. Like I would prefer um, something a little earthier toned for it, but it's beautiful. Um, you know, it's you, you can't please everybody with gilding. Some people don't even like gilding. I'm getting to the point where I would prefer just to do my own edging and not have every single deck come out gilded just because we all see things differently how we want them to to look on the edges and so you know you can't win with that but it's certainly a time in which everybody has an expectation especially in indie decks that they'd be gilded um, and there's so many beautiful gilding options now um, i hope to see more of like the colored gilding that we saw and like in the um indie light sears vision uh, light sears um tarot and some other colors um coming into play but i would almost like to have seen an antique gold um, just because of the color tone that's that's just preference that has you know neither this way nor the other and would certainly not stop me from purchasing the deck by any means um, a little note came with it uh, has a sticker that came thank you for your support yeah I'm sure that came with everybody who pre-ordered it and um, so I just had that stuck in there. So yeah, so that's sort of the basics. Okay, so let's put this in and zoom in here. Zoom out here and I probably need to shut the window because I like to have the window open because it gives some true light color, um, but at the same time it does uh, not give you the real saturation okay so here is the front of the little like pamphlet um, I will say again I have bad eyesight so I need to go find my glasses this is a beautiful sort of model background but then there's like almost like a dark green font it's a little bit hard for me to read because it's busy in the background I have bad eyesight um, and so when I try to hone in on the smaller words 
that makes it a little bit difficult for me to be able to hone in on versus just like a black and white. I understand why people do this. It's because it's visually pleasing, um, but it does, it does make it a little bit more difficult um, for those of us without the best eyesight to be able to read, but it's beautiful. Like it looks visually really stunning and it really is a little white book it just has sort of your basic information and we'll we'll give an example of that but as i said i have not found that to detract at all um back backings here absolutely gorgeous you know, you've got that plant growth here i actually quite like this border here um there is a border even on this can't get it out with one hand but this feels very earthy and it feels like you're looking at earth and the dynamics of the illuminated earth and um, where this feels like a walled garden and the secrets that you're going to find within and the growth and things like that. So to me, it goes really well with the theme of the deck. Okay. Again, beautiful saturation, um, beautiful uh, hand-painted collages. Uh, I don't know if she goes in and says anything. Uh, the Faceted Garden is a 50-card oracle of metaphor and symbolism. The garden referring to our home on earth with all of its conditions, both exquisite and harsh. The descriptions for each card are brief and associative uh, linking aspects of nature with human experience, wisdom, and choice. These are intuitive interpretations, loose and malleable, as your own instincts will guide you to find the answers that are meant for you. Remember, there are multiple facets or faces for every situation. Like, a, like wandering through a vivid dreamscape, this hand-painted and collaged deck will take you on an artful journey of the soul. And again, I, I don't even think I said, her name is Claire Mack. Um, amazing artist. Uh, I am quite enamored of her work. So just for an example, here we have animal allies, beloved companions and guides, connection, compassion, and innate wisdom, our internal anima that directs the unconscious through instinct and intuition. So this could literally be animal guides if you work with animal guides, um, or this could be an internal intuitive um, guide as well. So she kind of just gives you enough to say, again, I think that we can all kind of take animal allies and run with that. And you can see there are animal allies. There's a butterfly here. There's a zebra. There's a tiger here. There's a lamb here. Um, and so, you know, it, it's visually gorgeous. And I, I love having an animal ally in the deck. So that's that. I'm guessing there's going to be other allies, so I'm going to, you know me, start some piles. One thing I will say is that she, uh, and the one change is, these are fully borderless without this internal gold um, ring or this little system. She had done something with, um, I don't even remember to be honest, um, but there's a system of symbols at the top. It's not something I've ever used. I just use this as it is. This is an amazing card that comes up in so many readings. Um, I can't even remember that. It wasn't, it's not necessary. I would love to see, although it doesn't bother me. Like I don't even pay any attention to it. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing a version of this deck come out with it just being fully, um, borderless like this with the bottom on it but truthfully this i don't even think about it until just then when i was comparing them i don't even see them anymore because i don't it's not something that i use so i can't i can't speak to whether that was a little uh that was a helpful part of the system or not because it's just not something that i've used so here we have Anomaly, which I love. Um, again, I think one of the things I love about the Illuminated Earth is that difficulty or difficult conditions show up in the Illuminated Earth, but they aren't painted as being bad or evil. It's just, this is something that exists and it can be difficult or unfortunate depending on what situation we're in and what energy we need. So for example, if we're trying to gain stability and the eruption card comes up, which looks like a volcano erupting, volcanoes aren't evil, uh, eruptions aren't evil, lava isn't evil, right? But if you're in the midst of trying to stabilize and eruption 
actions are occurring that is is unfortunate for you at the moment right um, and so what I love so much about the illuminated earth is that those difficult energies are there but they aren't portrayed as being anything but just natural natural occurring things and so same thing with anomaly is an anomaly a good thing or a bad thing well it just um you know when something deviates from what is normal is that a good thing or is that a bad thing and it depends on what the question is and what you're trying to do so i, I like the way that she does that in the other and i feel like we're going to see that in here as well here we have this beautiful image of birth here you're almost like see this looks like a, a birth of an island where there has been uh, an eruption right and that lava is going to be cooling by this water and we're seeing the birth of an island we see a baby um, in a womb here um, so you have that a couple of different ways in which we see birth even flowers blooming can be a bit of a, of a of a birth as well that's just gorgeous now another interesting thing is that one of the things when I certainly when I probably when I did the walkthrough again I don't re-watch my walkthroughs but one of the things that I was slightly disappointed with was some of the people cards I was like oh why do we have to have people why do we have to have people in this illuminated earth right I the and I thought I will, you know, I'll try them. I can always pull them out if they annoy me because, you know, this is just such an earthy deck. As if what? As if people don't live on earth. It's That was ridiculous. But I was just concerned that it would just kind of be jarring. They are amazing. I have never pulled them out. I have loved working with all of them. They come out in very, uh, in very, um, powerful ways um, and so I love that I mean and I sense you know come to really understand um, that we have to obviously human beings are part of this illuminated earth um, part of this garden uh, faceted garden and so it is really quite stunning and I have never found them to be jarring uh, to any reading so I'm glad to see that they are here in this one so here we have the bloom card just beautiful cactus I love this cave card I mean there's so many let's see, see what she says about cave but again it's so it's just cave what does that mean are you going into the inner world are you diving deep into your um, subconscious are you um, you know is that the entry into the underworld like there's just so many amazing things are you coming out of the cave or are you going in the cave there's so many things that you can do with that um, a containment retreat self-soothing surveying the landscape from a safe haven before taking action and a period of hibernation so she just gives you some things to to key in with but it's beautiful stunning stunning card the celestial realm so she does pull you up we see this in the illuminated earth as well there's a cosmos card um, again it comes in really important moments um, of bringing you sort of upward um, as well because you know the earth doesn't exist in a vacuum it does also exist in the universe into the greater universe so even in this walled faceted garden um, we have um, the understanding that there is something outside of it as well so here we have consciousness and un interestingly the eyes are closed but the third eye is open there so that's so interesting right because you'd think consciousness or the eyes would be open but what's important is to have that uh, third eye open I wonder if we have unconsciousness. I'm starting to make piles. I love the idea of the core, the core of the seed, the core of the earth. There's all, what is at the heart of things. I love it. Cultivation. Now, this is wonderful because we are in a garden, obviously. Um, this is more of that structured when you are cultivating or cre carefully creating a space, which is very different than um, Earth in its natural environment, right? And it's the way it naturally grows. It's, so I love the idea of this card being here. Entropy. And again, another thing about the illuminated Earth that I love is that there are things like decay, but it isn't necessarily... Um, a negative thing it just exists 
Um, let's see what we have for entropy. Breaking down of order, degeneration, collapse may indicate a state of chaos, disturbance, death, end of a cycle. So this has a little bit more shadow aspect, I feel like, to then decay because the decay just is a natural occurring thing where entropy is a little bit more like you've let the garden get out of control <laughs> in some way. So I like that. Entwined is beautiful. What is the energies that are entwined? Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? That depends on the situation. Love this for fall. Um, I'm hoping, obviously, that we have all four of the seasons here, but mushrooms, um, we call them helicopters. I mean, it's just everything about that is, to me, absolutely beautiful. Uh, here we have flame. Gorgeous. Which can be really scary for a garden, but can also uh, be very powerful. Uh, beautiful fountain card. Again, water that's contained and directed um, is very different than, say, a waterfall or a river or something like that. The gates to the garden. Oh, I love this. I, I, I just want to do so many different piles. Like these are almost like structures of a garden. That's more natural. Okay. I'm just, I'm playing here. I'm playing around as per usual uh, with some decks. They cause me to play. Uh, gemstones, um, obviously, you could also have this along with the crystal allies as would, would go as well. Oh, here's some more allies, herbal allies, which I love. I have in my deck uh, animal um you know, animal support, crystal support, and plant support, um, and find those to be really useful things to have. And so I love when I find decks that have that because I do, it's an energy that I like to tap into. And then again, we've got a humanity card. I love this because, you know, these could also be human allies, right? Um, but this, we are part of nature. We are part of this faceted um, garden or earth. We have light. That's what makes everything grow. <laughs> we have lotus, which is an important symbol for me. Um, you don't get the flower without the muck. Um, and most of life takes place on this stalk here, not in the highs and not in the lows. Most of it takes place in between. Beautiful. Metamorphosis, that shift and that change uh, that occurs. We've got obviously butterflies here, which makes sense, but also the way in which human beings metamorphous as well. I'm gonna make a pile of people cards just to see how many people cards there are. The mineral realm. So we had crystals, uh, we've had herbs, we've had animals, we've had humans, and now we have minerals as well, which is amazing. Let's just see. Now let's just pull one of these types out. So if we go to Oh, there's a mycelium. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Okay, mineral realm. Solid, orderly, pure forms providing structure on a strong foundation, material to build upon and with, abundance of choices and versatility. I love it. Morning song. Oh, that's beautiful. Me morning in the garden, morning on earth. Okay, so this is a gorgeous picture. B, I've read, uh, been doing some reading actually, but let's see what she says here. Mycelium support system, gathering of resources to nourish the community, positive movement towards fruition and healing on a global level. I mean, how gorgeous is that? So you also have sort of the fungus world um, as well. And it's just beautiful. Her artwork is so stunning. Nest, love it. Safety, home. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. I We saw this a little bit earlier, but this new moon card is, you know, in a midst, because I'm seeing all of the cards in my piles laid out, and in the midst of all of this color, even the variety of tones and colors within this dark card are just stunning, and it really stands out. Nocturnus. Beautiful, which was cool because we had a um, 
morning song and then we have the song of the night not just not called the song of the night but <laughs> that's just me love a passage card i love the walkway the paths the transition the liminal space here um, the entryway into another space um, which is a little bit different than the gate right the gate is kind of entering into the garden but a passage um, is quite different it's a little bit more about that journey through it's about more of that time type energy which is gorgeous a perennial so uh, that I wonder if there's an, an annual we're gonna put that to the side but I like that because there is let's see what she has as her keywords here you know when you go to put different plants in your garden um, you're picking up some that are you know you're going to plant annually and then some of them that are going to come back uh, over and over again resurrection longevity and resilience the ability to withstand the cycles of prosperity and poverty suffering and joy a, a hearty constitution oops I, I wasn't even keeping this here while i was doing that so i love that pillar that is a stunning card that is a beautiful beautiful card yeah this does not disappoint again i have used this other deck so much getting perspective you can get up there and get some height with that pollinator so important in a garden right for things to grow forward you need uh the pollinators you need the bees you need the butterflies you need the hummingbirds you need all of the things the wind you know what's going to help with pollinating things the ram so this is interesting so now we have a specific animal uh, strength leadership ambition um, a fiery nature and strong will can also be a symbol of sacrifice and martyrdom uh, that's interesting I'm gonna put that aside and see if we have more um, of those scarecrow what a sad scarecrow okay I know I shouldn't be reading all these but it just fascinates me a solitary figure sorrow i can't read this i gotta get my glasses on scorn or shame that is steeped in the past that's that which is not meant to be a scarecrow well you're also driving things off as well and isolate it's a beautiful image a beautiful beautiful image I feel like there's so many ways that you can do this because it does for me read very much to be about sorrow. Um, but there is also putting up those um, things to that drive other people away that kind of isolates yourself um, in an interesting way versus say a scarecrow is protecting your crops because you're using a scare tactic or you're using something scary um, to be able to scare people oh, that kind of keep people at a distance um, and while that could be good for the garden it's probably not good for the soul right at least not in a lot of uh, not in long-term format of course you have to have a seeds card absolutely beautiful uh, makes sense and I, again I love that we have the spade here so we have this as an implement right of, of helping to plant um, but you could also dig up plants with it um, let's just see where she goes with this spades planting tending and harvesting what nurtures you utilizing the tools that will make your vision attainable digging in may, may indicate a helpful ally i love it use the tools that you have spring so we have had our fall and our spring we'll look at all those in a minute we again have the heavens still we've got also an ambulance going on outside beautiful star card up with the we had another one which i didn't keep oh, the celestial realm there we go there's beautiful summer again i'll come back to the four seasons we have the sun so i love that we have the sun and the moon represented in this deck quite love that let's stick that over there i love this card like just visually this terrarium card is stunning Talk, it's like a, a contained ecosystem. Um, I actually love terrariums myself in physical world. 
contained and composed an environment of limitations balanced with refinement preciousness may indicate an underlying need to set firm boundaries it's gorgeous that is a stunning stunning card thaw i love that the thaw after winter gorgeous thorns love it love it reminds me of the one where you are clutching the shells you're grasping on and hitting the other one and this shows up a lot where we even when things are hurting us we're still holding on but there's so much in with the garden with thorns and beauty um, you know with the roses and the thorns and you, you know, life is full of both of those things It can be, be protective hedges as well but if you get caught in the brambles not so wonderful union that's pretty self-explanatory okay so here we have the beautiful watershed card um uh a watershed like a watershed moment is i think like a, a turning point um i'm gonna look it up here real quick to make sure i'm not just being yes like a critical a critical turning point um, so let's see what she says here. Watershed, which is great to have you know, for a reading, to have be able to come up in a reading. Uh, a collection of resources, flow, network, the gathering of energy from multiple sources towards a common goal, a symbolic financial gain. I'm, I'm gonna, I like the idea of this sort of turn, where everything's sort of coming to a point where it's gonna be a shift or something like that. I feel like that could be really effective in a reading. The weather, I mean, how much does the energy and the weather energy around us going to impact a situation? That's really great to have. Um, and it's got a wild card here, and I love the, the image of the wild card, um, which is, I'm sure, just what it is. Presents a surreal or eccentric view of a given situation, potential lies in an unconventional approach think outside of the box i even like how sort of the card is sort of slanted the way the cuts of the lights are so it lets you say you know don't everything has to be perfect let's think a little bit outside of the box kind of the box card for me for lenormand there's a beautiful winter card again we're going to come back to those um, the wood or wood it's just wood itself as a growth as a um, safety of the forest as a resource for building like there's so much going into the idea of wood and then the beautiful wreath sort of the culmination of what you can pull from the garden and and create welcoming abundance and sh um sharing the bounty celebration of material riches and success a talisman of home and hearth um, i like this at the end here she says my wish is that you find yourself happily wandering through this metaphysical garden gathering buds of inspiration and sprigs of wisdom knowing you are not alone very beautiful um, okay so beautiful let me zoom out here so we have the sun and the moon, which I love. I think I said something. I think there's a sun in here, but not the moon in the illuminated earth. It's never been a problem for me, but I do love that those are both um, there. So we have sort of the sun, the moon, and the star cards uh, here, as well as sort of the celestial realm, which is probably more guides and the higher consciousness and that type of thing. Um, so we have those sort of above with, you know, all of the below that we have going on here. I would say there are less human figures in this one than in the other one. Um, I'll skim through the rest of them again. I kind of stopped looking. Um, there, so well, just in terms of images, not in terms of the um, um, cards that are, but we have the card of humanity as well. So we have um, allies, we have animal allies and herbal allies, but I would also see this as a crystal ally or finding that sort of gem in the middle of it. We also have humanity, which again, you could also see as being our best as humans, but also as human allies. We have the mineral realm, um, and then we have this community energy with the mycelium um, here. I really love these cards being here. 
uh, interesting this sort of sacrificial ram uh that ram energy we don't have any other specific animal energy so i think it's more about the concept of the um strength uh, of a ram and the agility and the tenacity and uh, all of that kind of stuff or again that sacrificial almost that blood red that we have here so that's an interesting one just because it kind of stands out on its own um, we have the four, I'm going to zoom in on these in a minute. Okay, I don't need to really do anything with that. Cactus kind of stands out. We have some mushrooms too, but cactus is interesting. Of course, to me, that has a lot to do with endurance. Um, I love these, and I think the gates here, the fountain, and the cultivation of an actual sort of... Um, made garden like a structured garden again as well as the terrarium shows that in even smaller form so I really liked that um okay I'm trying to make a little bit of space here I want to zoom in on these because these are so gorgeous so we're in fall in the northern hemisphere entering fall um, and then going into the beautiful winter and then going into opening up with spring and then into the summer um, these are just beautiful so so beautiful i love to have the seasons like this obviously that's something that i really pay attention to i really try to sink into um, the seasons and so i love having that there um, okay, so, and then those I already talked about were sort of the sun, the moon, the stars, and the celestial realm. So, people-wise, like, uh, pictures of people. I knew there was some, some, I mean, you have a skull there, so that's human form. Um, I think there's also, there's, there's, okay, maybe there's as many as I thought. There's one here. You've got the hand and the trowel there. Okay, yeah. I was thinking there were less in this one than in the other one. But um, I don't think so. I love this new moon card. I love all of the season card. I love that. It is stunning. Her artwork is true. And I'm not a big collage person, but this is a collage as an art form. Um, and obviously a lot of hand-painted components and things are probably all hand-painted components. But then collaged in, like she just does such. Um, I thought there was one called Union as well. Um, that had two people holding hands um, that I would put there. Anyways, the, it doesn't matter. The point is, is it, it, it's similar um, to the other where you have uh, that that chunk of people forms. And again, I, I I was disappointed with the first one after buying the first. I said, oh, these random people in here, but I have actually found them to be really gorgeous. Maybe that's. Did I not see a union? I thought there was a union card. Maybe I'm look, thinking of another deck that I've looked at. Anyways, um, or maybe that's in this one and my brain is just really going crazy. But, um, yeah, they're, they're, there's probably similar number. Again, this is a bigger, a larger deck. So, beautiful. I'm not in the slightest bit disappointed. It has, I think, held up the power of the first deck. Um, but definitely has different kinds of cards. Like I don't feel like these are overlaps of this and it really is talking more about cultivation and how are we cultivating our world. Whereas this feels more like this is the natural world and where we're at and this is just how things are. This is a lot more about structuring and, and cultivating and using our resources and how we sort of interact with that world, if that makes sense. Again, I haven't used this deck yet to get the feel for it cardstock wise it's definitely not the same cardstock which is a little bit too bad because well i say definitely yeah i would say this is not the same cardstock and i know that they have to or it's a different finish it may be the same cardstock with a different finish but it doesn't feel the same exactly it's got still beautiful satin feel um, to it so i don't think that that's any different i think they had to use a specific cardstock in order to use the gilding i know that you can own that that using gilding requires you to use certain um, finishes or certain laminations and so i think that that had a, a bit of an effect but they both feel that beautiful what i would call satin it's matte this leans maybe a little bit more matte i don't think so there's no sheen on these it's a satin matte 
Um, sat, pure satin would maybe have a little more reflection than this. I don't know. I'm not an expert at that. You'd think I would be, but I'm not. Um, it's beautiful. Like the cardstock is really gorgeous feeling. So it, it feels just, this feels just a little bit more maybe matte uh, than this, but they look in person quite similar. So, um, so this is not disappointing to this. In terms of thickness, this to me maybe feels slightly thinner, but I don't, I don't think that that's probably even the case. Um, it's hard because this has a different, you know, there's not the same number, and I'm not going to count out 50 to see. But it, this is not disappointing cardstock in any way to me, uh, and it shuffles beautifully. In some ways, I think this will um, work even more beautifully with the Moon Child than this, um, even though this works beautifully. I will say this feels like it, it, it's still stunningly um, uh, gorgeous in terms of its look. This does feel like it has some more cooler tones to it, which is really beautiful. I love that. You're seeing a lot more purples and blues. It just feels like it has just a little bit more of a cooler tone. Uh, this is a beautiful, earthy, earthy, gorgeous tones. And it has purples in here. And it has pinks. It has blues in here. So this is not a, at all. None, neither of these are one-dimensional. But there is an overarching, if you're just looking at it, a purpley toned to it that I really love. Uh, purple is one of my favorite colors. Still very earthy, but then, but that just has a little bit more of a, a cool earthy tone. <laughs> That's the best I can do. Uh, but I love it. I think, again, I think this is going to look really gorgeous with the, and even just the theme of this, I think in many ways will go very well with my Port in the Storm or like with grief readings or that type of thing that I use the Moon Child Tarot for. Um, I think the theme of this might actually even be a better fit, um, even though I love this and I, it just probably depends on the question of what's going on of which one I would choose. Um, but I feel like uh, before you being able to use this, right, a lot, um, I feel like this really is depictive of the illuminated. We're just illuminated the earth and the things that we see um, in our, the energies that are in the earth. And that is how that helps or hinders us is, is going to depend on the situation. It feels very much natural energy and how is that going to affect Whereas this, again, just think of the names. It's the faceted garden. is much more about how are we interacting and cultivating and working in our natural world. So cultivation, that, that term for me stands out strongly um, with this energy. It's stunning. I believe I'm going to love this just as much. Um, uh, but with that difference, like I can see where um, this would, why I would come to this deck versus this deck that I use so much, I can, I can see the areas in which um, I would pull this versus this. And that was what I was wondering, like if I can't combine these, well, is this just two decks with the same sort of energy? And I don't think that's the case. They do feel different uh, enough that I would have something to draw from on which one I would be going to over the other. And I'll have to come back after, obviously, after using this. I mean, look, the artwork is so, I, I truly think she is an amazing, amazing artist. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to, to work with this. So I'll have to let you know how that goes um, as I use this more. Um, but I'm excited to be doing so. So, But you could pull these together, right? You could pull these 
um, as sort of that underlying energy like they're so dark and earthy um, and this is just as beautiful but they're oops wrong way but I don't know there is just a, a bit of a cooler tone here so what's going on beneath the surface and then maybe up above how to cultivate it um, there's definitely I think a way in which you could use these decks together um, although I personally see myself um, using them more in conjunction with um, tarot decks or other oracle decks just depending on because that's how I primarily use this um, or sometimes I just do three dark card pulls for myself um, with this deck singly so I, I see that I will continue to use that one in that way okay I'm just rambling at this point because again I was so excited um, to get this deck um, and and I'm very excited to work with it. So I hope that this helps um, in some way. Uh, if either if you're trying to decide, you know, I have this one. Do I really want to get this one? For me, it was a no-brainer. Right? There's just certain experiences like if you have one experience with a deck and that person comes out with another one it's just sort of like okay I don't even have to think twice about this and that's kind of how this was for me um, I also work with this these type of archetypes a lot of earth of, of gardens of herbs and animals and all that kind of stuff in a way that makes this a bit of a no-brainer for me as well um, but maybe you have this and you're wondering do I really need a, this version of it so hopefully this helps for that as well um, to, to make that decision you may find that okay this faceted garden seems more like me than this feels or vice versa um, so hopefully this helps um, I am very thankful to Claire Mack for uh, doing the work to create another deck like this and I very much look forward to working with this. So okay, I will talk to you all later.